This is your demo in under 20 coming all the way from Todos Santos, Mexico. I have just wrapped up a couple of um, my mosaic art retreats here and I wanted to do something I find really special here in Todos Santos and that is working on driftwood. So this specific piece of driftwood is called cacti wood or cholo wood. And it is the skeleton, they say, of a cactus or cacti. And so what is great about it is look at all the little holes and divots you could add mosaic to. And when doing this, what's great about it, and I've done a couple of them here, is I've brought in the epoxy sculpt and I'm using epoxy sculpt as my adhesive because it will hold as you go into these types of holes. This is very deep. It's going to go all the way through. So if you tried to put any other kind of adhesive in there, you're really going to be challenged. So the epoxy sculpt I have here is the natural. I have part A and part B. And to save us a little time, I had worn some gloves and I already mixed it and did it for the two minutes. It's the equal parts A, equal parts B. And now by just pinching off a little bit of this ball, I can add it to this hole right here. And we'll start with this one here. I'm gonna do a couple of them and show you a couple different techniques that you can use um, in doing this. So you really wanna push it in good so you can't see it too much and we'll cover it up with our tessera, but enough that it's going to I pushed it in a little far, so I'm gonna add a little bit more of a layer because I really want the support for the tessera, even though it's going to um, not be seen. Now, my tessera choices are Mexican Smalty in an ocean mix and a red. I have a little bit of orange over here. And the other thing I did is, you can learn this from Kelly Knickerbocker's uh, epoxy sculpt, uh, as a mosaic material course is I tinted some uh, epoxy sculpt and made filati. So now I have these beautiful pieces of filati that can just set right in and then using, I can start with my fingers a little bit, getting some of these pieces in to here and I'm doing trying to do a nice little complementary colors, the blue and the orange, which are my favorite. And I have my tweezers here that I can use to get in a little bit tighter to some of these areas. But I really like this uh, filati and I did it in three different colors so that I could have a little bit of a range throughout this piece. Or I could add, this is a really beautiful dark green and they're all different heights. And you can come in at an angle. So this one I'm pushing in at a little more of an angle this way. But once these are all secured into place, this one I might just nip a little bit more to get, um, well, that kind of shattered, but I might be able to use a little bit of a shard in here. Get that in there, using your thumb gently, and maybe even one more. It's all just for like pops of color. So I'm gonna leave that one to sort of set up and I'm gonna work on this one. This is a little bit of a bigger one right here. And since I have some more mixed and we can do a little bit different filati. Let's see, this is gonna be too much, which is good. You can pinch it off. This stuff is good for about a half an hour. It'll really start to set up and not be as friendly. So let's see, I did that turquoise. I think I'll come in maybe with something a little darker. So with this, you use you can use your nippers to cut them and you wanna just get um, them to the size of what you would want to add into your art, whatever that is. And I like this um, one little bit here and um, so, we could put some orange, more orange with it. And I'll show you how I also cut my um, uh, small tea. So you could see a little bit of that. And we could add maybe even some of this turquoise small tea into this piece. So you can pick and choose, like this is a little too thick for me. I don't like how thick that's sitting into it. So what we can do is just cut it in half. And now look at that. And it's like beautiful and it could go in either way. I'm going to put it point side up on one of them and 
point side down on that one. And then we can do another one that could be cut. Well, again, just orange and red sometimes will shatter when you just try to get them down to smaller pieces. In fact, I'm gonna try a little, maybe we'll add even a little red in here. We're kind of getting a little crazy with the color. You know what? No, I'm gonna go back to this Filati. And this Filati is a different thickness. I kind of wanted it to have more of an organic sort of vibe to it because of um, the Mexican Smalty being so organic. So it's kind of more about balance and composition that you're getting exactly the kind of right amount. It sort of looks like it's meant to be. So I would probably add at least one more blue into that of the Smalty. And so we can add that into like right there. So just gonna keep going. So when we come back, I'll show you a few more of these and how I cut uh, some of the Mexican Smalty. We'll be right back. All right, now we're back. And before we continue adding more to the cacti wood, I thought I'd do a quick cutting demo. And I have three pair of wheeled nippers here that I think can be really beneficial showing how each of these cut the Mexican Smalty. So right here, these are called the Montaliths, and these are French Canadian, made in Italy, but they're done, I think, by a French Canadian company. And these wheels, they have a tilt to them. So if you've never seen these before, we like to call these the more burly of the wheeled nippers. And people like Marie Swinnon and uh, Kelly Knickerbocker really like using these for cutting glass and either Mexican Smalty or Italian Smalty. If you're not going to use a hammer and hardy these can be a great way to cut your glass and I like when I'm doing these shards I like to get them as thin as possible and I brought in some of the pale blue mix from nextsmalty.com and that's what we use here at my retreats so that just shows you getting straight cuts really nice but um, easy to use. It does take a little bit more to widen your hand with these nippers, but really love working with them for good, clean cuts. You always gotta make sure that your smalty, if you want a straight cut, is going in the same direction as your wheels. Don't put it like that or you'll get a diagonal cut. You gotta put it in the direction of the wheels and snap with intention. So that is the Montalits. These are called the QEPs, and the QEPs are a uh, another wheeled nipper, and they come with these numbers on them. And the idea is, using an Allen wrench, you can loosen the wheels and get the full life of the wheels because you would start with that arrow and that arrow lined up, and then you would move them as they needed to be, counterclockwise um, and clockwise, each one and each time. And once you get back to that arrow they have you have used the full um life of the wheel they also have adjustments here where it can open less and open less so if you're working in stained glass look how close the wheels get together if you need some stained glass cutting so i like using them when i'm doing the mexican smalty to be this wide and you can put them same thing wheels in and snap down. And these are good because they really take a lot of the pressure off your wrist. Super easy to cut the uh, small team straight cuts. And I'm getting um, down into these, you know, small pieces because I want to make the shards um, with the small tea. So I will do another example cut. And this one gave a little bit of a curve. I think, let's, no, I think I used the other side of it. Let's try that again. Yeah, really nice straight cuts. And then here we'll do one more and get some shards. And so the last one I'm gonna show you is where we, what I have been using. And these are the Lepinets. And these might be the most popular of the nippers. And you can hear how that sounds when it cuts. And it's because you're hearing the uh, the two um, nubs right here clink together. So this one is probably the best nipper to work with when you wanna create like what we call nibbling. 
So just a little bit of nibbling and you can get down to really small pieces. So that shows you the three. I really like this one. I did make a little more epoxy sculpt. So I thought I would just show you guys one more of um, these and in the center here where it's a little bit bigger. And what's really nice is the color of this epoxy sculpt is grayish. It's called natural, but it's got this kind of grayish tint to it. So it looks kind of like the wood, which is just fantastic. And if you bury it in that hole just enough, you are gonna be fine adding more of your shards. So since I cut some of this blue, I thought I'd bring in a little bit more of this color. And again, we'll do the complementary color because the orange or the red is kind of our, we're gonna do both on this one, sort of bring it together. And so I don't like how thick this one is. So I'm gonna come in with my lepinets, give it a little nip. And now I can put it in a little bit deeper. And these will, once they're in, these could actually live outside. And a lot of the art that I make here in Toto Santos is from nature. It's on rocks or it's in pieces of driftwood and it can live outside. So this piece will go live somewhere displayed on the property and be um, able for people to see. Now it is a little bit sharp. So you gotta be really careful that if you have animals or anything like that, you wanna make sure you're protecting them from this type of art. So I like to always work with that rule of three as well, or five. So I have three orange, I have two red, and I have one, now two of my, and I don't want it too matchy. I'm gonna go heavier on the red on this one. So we'll do five red. And you can see the epoxy sculpt starting to um, bulge out a little bit because there's a little too much of it. So we're just gonna pull off a little bit, put that back in, secure those pieces, and then come in with a little more of the red. Like this piece will be good, push that in. And you know, you're gonna kind of, to always be kind of manipulating them so it looks intentional. And I need one more red for my five. So we'll bring in one more red. And now I think I'm gonna bring in a little bit of this darker, this is called the ocean mix. This might be one of my, ah, uh, see that just shattered? Center of your wheels, center of your wheels and press with intention. Cut with intention, always cut with intention. Let's get a couple more of those in. So this is just, you know, a demo give you guys some inspiration, other driftwood ideas I'm sure out there, but knowing that epoxy sculpt can be such a great adhesive to work with and then bringing in, you know, more of this filati that you can learn from in Kelly Knickerbocker's online course. And I think I'm just gonna, you know what? I think I'm gonna take this one out. I'm gonna add a couple of the filati since I made them and we'll wrap this up. This is fun. And this is kind of the focal one because it's the biggest one. So we want to make sure, I've got a skinnier one here, I think. And this Filati, once it has cured, careful they're sharp, is, uh, can also be okay outside. It's the same material as this, we've just tinted it. So I highly recommend going to learn that technique if you haven't yet from Kelly's course. All right, we're gonna put this last orange in and I think we're gonna say all good. So I might do a few more of them, but where did that one fall? This one fall out? Hold on, we gotta, yeah, some of these got touched, I think, while I was making. Yeah, we'll put this one back in. So again, you wanna make sure everything is secure because once this filati sets up, it is done. It will be hard as a rock. Not filati, the epoxy sculpt. All right, it's great uh, doing this, and I hope you enjoyed your demo under 20 from Todos Santos, Mexico.